Hello there again. Thank you for joining me. This is the Texas Deacon. Today's lesson is entitled, What is the Bible and where did we get it? The Bible is the inspired word of God to us. It has been described as God's love letter to us and I believe that's about as good a description as you can give. God's love letter to us. Because God does love us. The Bible teaches us how we should be born, how we should live, and how we can die. We should be born of married parents. In this day and time in America, that's becoming a thing of the past. And it's not good. We've got to return to the principles of God. We should grow up in a Christian home. We're having a great falling away in the church now in attendance and there are just not as many Christian homes as there should be. Then we should live a life that glorifies God. Nothing else can be said about that. Live a life that glorifies God. And when you will die, you will die in peace. The name, the word Bible, what does it mean? Where did it come from? It's a Latin word. Biblia or Biblios, which means papyrus, paper, book, canon, or list, L-I-S-T. Where did we get the Bible? Some people think that if Moses was leaving the mountain with the Ten Commandments, God tucked it under his arm. Not true. Some think it was dug up in the Middle East on one of the diggings over there. The Bible was written over at least 1,600 years by many people. These people, of course, over 1,600 years did not know each other, didn't know each other existed, but they all wrote about the same thing that would mesh together just like two hands mesh together, which is God's Word. They were inspired men, inspired people. The Bible, as proof of its legitimacy, has stood the test of time. Some of it is over 3,000 years old, the writings, maybe up to 3,600. The newest writings in the, in the New Testament are 18 to 1,900 years old. They have stood the test of time. They have withstood every challenge that's ever been thrown at them. And this to me, is proof in itself of the divine origin of the Bible. The Catholic Church must be given credit for the Bible that we have today. They're the ones that put it together, actually. Now, when you start studying the history of the Bible and history of the Catholic Church, you will get slight differences in your information. This is okay, but they all say generally the same thing. For example, the number of books when these uh, councils met, and I'm going to talk about the councils later, they had, I read as many as 400, I read as many as 600 different manuscripts or books in which they had to decide are these legitimate scripture or are they not? These meetings of the Catholic Church they referred to them as councils. And I'm just going to list a few of the meetings, and they weren't all called councils. You had the Council of Carthage, the Council at Constantinople, the Council at Ephesus, the Council at Hippo, the Council of Nicaea, the first one, which was tweaked around 325 AD. And that's where most of the Bible that we know today came together. You had the Council of Nicaea the seventh. You had the Council of Trent, and there were many others. Christians believe that the people at these councils were divinely inspired and were full of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. These councils had some guidelines which they used when they studied these different manuscripts and different writings. One of them was, who wrote them? Were they written by an apostle or someone very close to the apostle? 
Was the writing widely accepted amongst the people? Was it consistent within itself? And was it consistent with known uh, writings of known uh, uh, authors? And the overall message, was it divinely inspired? The Bible was uh, written basically in Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. And then got translated into Latin by the Catholic Church, of course. Good people. Up around the years, late 1300s up to about 1611 in this era, is when we, when there was a lot of growth. Now, we, we had some Bibles come along that was called the Wycliffe, the Vulgate, the Gutenberg, the Bishop's Bible, the Geneva Bible. And another thing happened during that time period that really brought the Bible to the common people, and that was the movable type printing press. So it could be printed, and it reduced the cost, and not only just the cost, because in days of old, before the printing press, only the rich could own a copy of the Bible, and it was extremely expensive, and they would commission a monk to copy the Bible. They were all hand copied. But when they came, when the movable type printing press came into existence, then the copies obviously became more available to the people. The people had no access to the Bible before, uh, before the movable type printing press came in and, and they could be printed at a reasonable cost. Now, the 1611 King James Bible, which we commonly know as the Bible, was, uh, was, was commissioned by King James. And I heard one time that uh, King James supposedly made the statement that the plowboy in England would know more about the Bible than the Pope in Rome. There was uh, a little conflict between uh, the Church of England, which had broken away, and the Catholic Church in Rome. And what I have given here is just scratch the surface. My intention was to just give you a broad overview of how we got the Bible and what it means. And I'm devoting a few minutes to a subject which would take a few years to accurately understand. So again, what I did here today it's just to scratch the surface. I hope that, it, and collecting Bibles can be a, a, a fun hobby like any other hobby. And I'm, like I say, I hope that you will take this and, and expand on it and learn about the Bible. It's a good, interesting subject. There's a lot of history there. And you'll be a better person for it. You'll be a better Christian for it. Okay? May God bless America. May God bless the Republic of Texas. May God bless you and yours. Thank you.